This is my retire early on 868 USD per month in Hoi An, Vietnam information. This is Dan of Vagabond Awake, the YouTube channel for VagabondBuddha.com. We're presently exploring Southeast Asia, reporting on the best places to retire cheap in paradise. We were last in a beach suburb of Da Nang, Vietnam called Mayam Beach. Our Retire Cheap report on Da Nang, Vietnam, is now available at VagabondBuddha.com. But today, we are reporting to you from Hoi An, Vietnam, about 45 minutes south of Da Nang. Hoi An, Vietnam, is one of the most culturally rich cities in all of Vietnam. Because of its historical significance, Hoi An is also included in the itinerary of many cultural tours of Vietnam. Hoi An was once the largest trading port in all of Southeast Asia for dishes, cups, and other porcelain tableware that is affectionately called China in the USA. Although commonly referred to as China in the West, Porcelain tableware has been manufactured all over Asia for centuries, including in China, Iran, Japan, Malaysia, South Korea, Sri Lanka, Taiwan, and Turkey, among others. In its heyday, Hoi An was where traders from all over Asia would come to trade for porcelain tableware from other parts of Asia. But Hoi An was lost to history for about 200 years when ships could no longer enter the harbor safely because it was filled with mud from too much rain. But Hoi An's beauty came back to life in about 1980 when the buildings began to be restored for tourism. It has grown in popularity steadily ever since. This is my third visit to Hoi An. I was last here in 2019. I've been traveling the world for 17 years now, 67 countries so far. I return to the USA for a week or two each year to see family and friends, but the rest of the year I keep moving forward reporting on the cost of retiring all over the world. Hoi An is in the center of Vietnam facing the South China Sea. Da Nang, Vietnam has the nearest international airport about 45 minutes away, so it's easy to get to Hoi An from overseas. We will be reporting on our other favorite city to retire in Vietnam, so subscribe if you want to learn more about that one also. The local Vietnamese food is some of the most delicious and healthiest food in the world, so we have been eating mostly in the neighborhood restaurants just outside the tourist areas for about $2 per meal per person. When we arrived in Hoi An, we spent the first few days at the beach here, which is called An Bang. The Google map shows it is five kilometers or three miles away from central Hoi An. The beach town is cute, but I would not recommend it in December when we were there. It's too cold. While in Vietnam, the local restaurant food was so reasonably priced and so delicious that we ate out for most meals. We couldn't justify the extra time it would take us to shop, cook, and clean up when eating out is so cheap and enjoyable. If you don't know how to find delicious Vietnamese food very easily at reasonable local prices, I recommend that you just try out our best restaurants list. All of our favorite restaurants and markets are listed at the first link in the notes below this video. Furnished apartments start for around 300 US per month, but don't book 30 day stays on Airbnb.com anymore. Internet connected landlords are overcharging all over the world now. Just book a few days online in one of the hotels and then find a local place once your feet are on the ground. This report explains how. But stay away from anyone trying to get you to buy a condo when you first move overseas. Just rent for the first year or two. If someone is being pushy about real estate, it might mean they're getting a big kickback if they can get you to buy. Okay, cost of living in Hoi An, Vietnam. Here's our estimated cost of living converted into US dollars if the two of us moved to Hoi An 
on a lower budget. We also include more typical expenses we've heard from other expats in case you want more typical expenses. We found an example furnished apartment starting at 3.2 million dong, which is $130 per month. But we would look for something closer in for about five to seven million dong or two to 300 per month. So we could walk everywhere or ride a bicycle. Other expats with higher budgets spend around four to 600 per month for two bedroom apartments and townhouses. Here's the process we use to find great apartments. So we will show you a table of all of these expenses in a moment. We will use 300 per month for our lower rent estimate and 600 per month for the higher cost of living, more typical of other expats. Okay, utilities. We estimate our utilities would average about $80 per month. The utilities would be about $120 per month for the larger places uh, for higher cost of living expats. Groceries. We shop mostly in the public market where the vegetables, fruits, and rice are cheaper. We estimate about $250 per month for groceries. Other expats are likely to also buy more expensive imported foods at Winmart and Vinmart and more meats, so they would likely spend $350 per month in groceries. Restaurants. We go out to eat much of the time in the local restaurants, averaging about $2 per meal per person and a few times per week in the expat or tourist restaurants for about six to eight dollars per person per meal. If we went out to eat five or six times per week, mostly at local Vietnamese restaurants and only twice per week in the expat style restaurants, we would spend around fifty dollars per week or two hundred per month in restaurants for the two of us. Other expats are likely to eat more Western style foods in expensive expat style restaurants and less Vietnamese restaurants, so they would likely spend $350 per month for two people or even more. Cell phone data. The cost to recharge our prepaid service is about $6 per month, which includes six gigabytes of data per day. My Android phone will act as a hotspot so we can both be on the internet at the same time when we're out of the house together. Both Vinaphone and Viatel had good prices and reception. Other expats for two people are likely to buy two prepaid SIM cards, so they would spend 12 bucks per month. Okay, laundry. We would look for an apartment that included a clothes washing machine and people hang their dry their clothes in Southeast Asia. Since the laundry detergent is included in our grocery bill, there's no extra expense for laundry. We used a water filter we carry with us and the replacement filter costs about $3 per month. Okay, internet, 30 megabits per second up and down is about 10 bucks per month for in-home Wi-Fi. It's advertised at 100 megabits per second, but the realized speed is more about 30 megabits per second up and down. There are higher speeds available, but for most people that will be lightning fast. Transportation. We walked almost everywhere in Hoi An. Even if we went round trip once per week, it would not exceed $20 per month for Grab Taxi. Stay away from scooters unless you're highly experienced riding scooters in Southeast Asia. Other expats might take more Grab Taxis, so $45 per month. Alcohol, which of course is optional. Local beer is about 30K dong. Uh, in local bars and restaurants, or $1.20, and about 18,000 dong in stores, which is about 72 cents U.S. So we would spend about 90 bucks per month on alcohol for the two of us. Other expats would spend more, uh, a higher amount for imported foreign or craft beers in expat bars for about two bucks each. So about 180 per month for two people, assuming they're not into imported whiskey or wine. Finally, entertainment, which of course is optional. We would budget about 200 per month for entertainment for the two of us. We generally enjoy doing more do-it-yourself kinds of entertainment. So expats mostly spend a little more, maybe 300 per month for two of them. And so if we add all that up, uh, rent, I'll start with the lower cost. Uh, our rent at 300, utilities at 80, 
groceries 250, restaurants 200, cell data 6, drinking water 3, internet 9, and transportation 20. Our basic cost of living would be $868 per month. Uh, if you add the alcohol optional of 90, you're at 958. And if you add the uh, optional entertainment, uh, 200, that would put you at $1,158 per month. Uh, the basic cost for the higher expat uh, would be $1,489 as shown in the table. And the optional uh, $180 for alcohol added would be $1,669. And if you had 300 more for entertainment, it would put you at $1,969 per month uh, for a higher end expat, although you could go higher. Uh, the above lower estimated cost of living would be if the two of us lived in Hoi An on a tight budget, the higher above estimate is just an example of what other expats might spend if they moved here and were easy come, easy go with their money. To fully understand what it would cost you to live here, you must do an exploratory visit and put your feet on the ground. Uh, never move anywhere until you have visited first personally to verify the living costs for your lifestyle and needs. I'm not guaranteeing these prices. These are just my notes and estimates from the time of my visit and this post. Your costs will likely be drastically di different depending on your lifestyle and how long it's been since this post. Okay, Hoi An, livability factors. Here are the factors I think about when I consider a place for early retirement potential. After I discuss each factor, I'll assign an overall retirement desirability score to Hoi An. I'm writing my observations based on my personal experience over the last three visits with my feet on the ground here. Okay, walkability, I would say hi. If you lived in the old town area of Hoi An or the central area, everything you need is within walking distance. Everything you need like restaurants, expensive and cheap foreign and domestic foods, wet markets would be extremely walkable. You may want to take a grab taxi to the beach, which is about five kilometers away or three miles, and to the grocery stores if you buy too many groceries to carry home. Uh, internet. Uh, hi, the internet Wi-Fi has not been an issue in Vietnam. It is 30 megabits per second up and down. Unlock your phone before exiting the USA. Pick up a SIM card that includes 6 gigabits per day, uh, $6 per month. Typical of Southeast Asia, you're allowed to use your Android phone as a hotspot for your computer if you get a dead Wi-Fi connection anywhere. We just buy one SIM card and turn on the hotspot so we can both get online when we're out of the house together. If you would like to learn how I fired my boss and traveled the world for 16 years and how I pay for things, grab a free copy of my ebook. Okay, food. I would say hi. I love Vietnamese food. If you eat all three meals per day in local restaurants like we have, you can easily stay under six bucks per day per person, but other expats are budgeting 10 to $15 per day per person because they eat three meals per day in Western style restaurants. Weather, I would say medium. The average temperature year round is 29 Celsius, which is about 84 Fahrenheit. The hottest time is June to August when it can max out at 38 Celsius, which is 100 Fahrenheit from time to time. The coolest time is November to January with an average temperature of 20 Celsius, which is 68 Fahrenheit. The weather is moderate and dry from February to May. The rainy season is September to January when rains can even cause floods. If the heat is ever too much, just take a trip up to the mountains such as Da Lot, uh, Vietnam to cool down. It's at 4,500 meters. Uh, or forgive me, feet above sea level, and rooms start at around 20 bucks per night. View our Delat report to know where to stay, eat, and play in the cool weather. Okay, things to do. I would say medium, kayak and boat rides, scooter and bicycle rentals. The Hoi An Full Moon Festival takes place every full moon. People exchange flowers, candles, and lanterns for good fortune. People float candles in small containers on the rivers 
A beautiful beach is just a six kilometer bicycle ride away. There are four museums in Hoi An and 10 art galleries. You can dance the night away and get up in the morning and go to yoga. Grab the bus to Da Nang for $2. I have labeled Hoi An as a medium for things to do, but if you prefer a smaller town atmosphere, this has many things to do for a smaller town. Okay, expat community, hi. For a town this size, the expat community in Hoi An is fairly well organized. For example, there are a number of Facebook pages that answer questions, have rental properties, tell where to find stuff, and ask or qu answer questions about visa runs. And I've put in four Facebook that you can click and go to. If you are less expat oriented like me, these Facebook resources are still great resources to find odds and ends in Hoi An or nearby Da Nang that you miss from home. They are also a great place to buy and sell things, find a place to live, and find out things that only longer-term expats would likely know about. Okay, real estate, hi. A 700-square-foot condo or 65 square meters would sell in the range of 66000 to 106000 U.S., according to Numbio.com uh, for Hoi An. You'll have to pay the higher end of that range as you approach the most expensive areas. Don't even consider buying until you have lived in a place for at least a year or two and are totally in love with it. Even then, make sure you get very good legal advice from someone who is not associated with your broker or your new lover overseas. Land ownership is very limited for foreigners. Instead, consider keeping your house in the U.S. and renting that out. That will give you some inflation protection because rents tend to go up every year in the U.S. faster than Southeast Asia, although that's not guaranteed in the future. Okay, medical, I would say hi. You should travel 45 minutes north to Da Nang for anything serious. Historically, wealthier Vietnamese would often travel to Bangkok, Kuala Lumpur, or Singapore for significant health challenges. But over the last decade or two, Vietnam has slowly been raising its game medically. We met two American expats while visiting Da Nang and Hoi An. One was, uh, had lived in Da Nang for a year and had moved here from Saigon, where she had lived for one and a half years. While in Saigon, she had surgery on her leg at the French Vietnam Hospital, or FV Hospital, which cost 1200 for everything. She paid for herself since she had no insurance. She said it felt more like a five-star resort than a hospital. I have had a checkup at that FV hospital in Saigon, and it's first class. We also met an expat whose, life, whose wife had a baby at the hospital in Da Nang called International Vinmec. He said the services were amazing, and it only cost him 500 bucks for everything, including the hospital stay and a C-section surgery. Jump on my email list to find out what insurance I bought for my overseas life. This is not an affiliate link. I'm just sharing what I learned. Okay, Visa, I would say medium or maybe even low, depending on how you evaluate it. There's no retirement visa in Vietnam. The expats we have met mostly just do a visa run once a month to renew their visas. But I just read a comment on one of the Hoi An Facebook pages that an expat was excited that you can now get a three-month e-visa for 25 U.S. every time she does a visa run. We also ran into a few expats on the street who recognized us from our YouTube channel. They both mentioned that their agents take care of the visa run for them for $100 per month. None of the expats we have chatted with have said they had any trouble doing visa runs one after another over the last few years. According to them, it's an accepted practice in Vietnam, like it was in Thailand a decade ago. Things can change, but that's what we're hearing on the street now. But I know a few people who left Vietnam over the last three years because they were tired of doing visa runs every month. But we may have more good news for you soon. We just did this new three-month e-visa ourselves, and it works great. Now we're just waiting to hear from other expats, whether or not Vietnamese immigration is letting people use the three-month e-visa for back-to-back visa runs. 
Uh, once we have more data that Vietnam is routinely accepting the three-month e-visa for visa runs without objection, it will mean that people could stay in Vietnam indefinitely by doing only four visa runs per year at 25 each. That would be amazing. We'll re report more on that later. Transportation, almost everything we needed in Hoi An was in walking distance. The only time we took a grab taxi was to go from the beach in uh, Hoi An uh, back to Hoi An Central. Plus there is a bus for 30K Dong or a $1.30 uh, into Central Da Nang. That is 35 minutes uh, or 45 minutes away to Da Nang Central. Okay, Hoi An, cheap retirement desirability score. I would say medium. Vietnam is now clearly near the top of my uh, countries to retire cheap in paradise for pennies. Hoi An is one of the most charming cities in all of Vietnam. The only thing that annoys me about it as compared to other parts of Vietnam is how many tourists are walking around the ancient city center on weekends and evenings. It's great for people watching or playing with tourists when the mood strikes, but otherwise we would stay outside the central part much of the time. Subscribe now so you will see where we go next in Vietnam. Click the link in the notes below this video to get the resources discussed in this video along with my free ebook, How I Fired My Boss and Traveled the World for 17 Years and How I Pay for a Life of Full-Time Travel.